so I'm fishing today. It's kind of cold, if you can't tell, I'm in Nebraska. This is the pond I fell into. You guys remember that? I was with Josh, and uh, you know, we walked through, the, walked through ice, and I fell through in the water. Remember what I said about don't do this at home? Yeah, this is why, this is it. That was fun, I actually, we, he got the rod back. I remember you guys were complaining because I left the rod in the water. Well, we got it back, and it's, uh, the reel's kind of toast, but the rod's good. We're fishing today, so with Josh, my friend Matt is down there. We're gonna hit up, we got a couple ponds here. May take the yaks out later. Um, not exactly sure, but we're gonna see if we can catch some, some winter bass, some cold water winter bass. I know a lot of you guys live in the Midwest and are probably struggling, maybe struggling, to catch fish in cold water. I, mean, I would assume this water is probably in the 40s, maybe 50s, maybe 50s. We're gonna we're gonna see how it goes today. I'm gonna start off with probably meh, a chatterbait, maybe a jig, maybe a square bill. Just gonna kind of junk fish and see if we can see if we can catch some bass. Um, all right, I'm not gonna throw the chatterbait right now. I normally start with the chatterbait, but you guys always get pissed when I do that, so I'm gonna start off with a little crankbait just to mix it up, just to keep myself from throwing the chatterbait. Yeah, I'll probably bring it out at some point, but. For now, I'll throw this little crankbait and see what happens. So far, I haven't gotten a bite. I'm gonna make a move to the other side of this pond. It looks like it's deeper. The state, the bank is steeper. You guys are new to pond fishing, maybe you don't know. If there's a bank that's steep, that goes into the water, it's probably a, a little bit deeper right there. And usually in the winter, bass tend to, to kind of chill on like deeper points and deeper banks. Goes to deep water, they don't really go up shallow in the winter. In the spring, that's when they move up shallow to go spawn and stuff like that. But in the winter, I catch most of my fish on the deeper, the deeper banks on ponds. So I'm gonna make my way over here and see, see if we can make something happen. Okay. Okay. There's one. Yep. First fish on the spinner bait. Bam, son. All right, let's see how big he is. Is he a big one? It's a pretty decent sized one. Come here, buddy. Look at that cold water fish. This little bass is wearing wearing some lipstick. There we go, folks. First, first cold winter bass of the day. It's freezing, it's 40 degrees outside. This bass is pretty much frozen. My hands are getting cold, but first fish on the spinner bait. We're making, we're making progress here. We've only been here for about 20 minutes or so, so we're hoping, um, this, this pond right here that I'm fishing right now has these guys, the small ones, and there's a pond over there that has the big ones. There's not as many, so I'm gonna catch a few of these dudes and then just go after a true Nebraska brute. See you later, Ethan. You'll be able to get it. Woo! First fish, baby. You got one? Yeah. There you go, Matt's got a fish here. What are you throwing, Ned Rig? Yeah. I want a little finesse action. There you go. Found the juice. It's kind of in this corner. There's some rocks. We're wondering these rocks might be holding the heat, and that's what's holding these bass. Because we've caught, including what Josh has caught, probably at least seven or eight so far. That's a little little Ned Rig fish right there. Nice. There's rocks that come into the water, and where they're holding the heat. You think that's why? That's my conclusion. Oh yes. Okay. So wind, wind blown, heated rocks pattern we're on right now. I'm gonna try some finessing. Matt's, Matt's catching a whole bunch on the finesse. I'm gonna try. Actually, this is the first time I've thrown this new balance. Got a new balance spinning rod in. I'm gonna give it a little little test to see if I see if I like this one. This one's made for more of bass, not not panfish like the uh, that one trout rod that I was using the other day. Let's see if this one works. Oh, there's a fish. Yep. Oh, finesse boys. Ooh. Oh. Come here, little guy. Light line finessing. There we go, folks. Decided to go to the. The finesse, little finesse. That little dude munched it. There's, I mean, they're they're one and a half pounders. They're not bad for, honestly, for catching them in freaking 40 degree weather. We're actually catching quite a few. See you, Felipe. We're making progress. They were eating the spinnerbait a little bit, and actually, now that I think about it, Josh caught a whole bunch on a spinnerbait when the wind was blowing, and then like 10 minutes ago, the wind calmed down, and none of us have really caught a whole bunch on spinnerbaits. And once the wind calmed down, we kind of went to more of a subtle presentation, Ned rigs, and just little shaky heads, and. That actually seems to be working better. So I'm thinking that the wind had something to do with it. A lot of times if it's windy, you can throw reaction baits, moving baits, stuff like that, and it works. But if it's not windy and it's slick calm, that's why I always throw like a Sanko or a shaky head. So that's kind of what we're doing here. We're gonna, I'm gonna catch a few more fish. I'm gonna jump over to the big pond to catch a big one. Like there's not very many fish at all in that pond, but the ones that are that are, are in there are actually pretty big. That's according to Josh, that's, that's what he said. There's one. Oh. They are munching the net rig. I like this rod. It's a pretty good finesse rod, actually. Nice light line. 
These fish didn't even see it coming. There we go. These are all the same size. These are cookie cutters. Cookie cutter bass. They're actually pretty fat though. See you, buddy. Like I said, we're using we're using a little little Ned rig. Basically just like a little chunk of a of a stanko and just a little jig head. It's really nothing. It's a do-nothing bait. You throw it out there and you just kinda let it sit and it catches fish. Definitely the biggest so far. Two two and a quarter probably. Look at those do you see those spots on it? He's got like freckles. Oh what the heck? That's weird. I've never seen a bass like that. If you guys know in the comment section, let me know. Why does this bass have freckles? All like, over the tails, too. Yeah, like, you, can you guys, I hope you guys can see that on the GoPro. Look at it. It's like spotted. Why does that, why does that fish have that? Let me know if you guys know. I'm sure some of you guys are smart biologist type folk. So we're headed to the, the big pond here. We're gonna see if, see if we can find some toads. All right, we made a move. We caught a few more small ones, but we're going after the big ones now. This pond doesn't have quite as many fish, but if you do catch one, it's probably gonna be a good, pretty good sized one. Went to the wind blown, the corner where the wind is blowing. We, <clears throat> we think that's going to be kind of the key here is the wind blown corners. It's a lot of the time where bass and bait fish and stuff group up. There's one. There's one. I just saw him crush it. Come on, bud. That's a good one. He came right out of the shallow water. Yep, that's much better. That's why you come to this This other pond. It's got the big ones in it. This dude's got the freckles too. What the heck? I hope one of you guys know. I, I'm really actually curious why these these bass have freckles. As you can see there, that's this is the first bass in the new pond. This is, he's probably two and a half or so. Getting, we're upgrading. These fish are, uh, they're up, they're up feeding actually on the shallows where the, where the wind's blowing. That's that's the pattern we're on today, but I'll let this, let this little guy go. All right, see you later, Jerome. There's one. Oh yeah, that's a big one. Yep, good sized fish right there. Second one on the spinner bait, right? Oh goodness, goodness. That's a good fish. Hey buddy, you munched it. Got him. Got him. That's a long one, that's pushing three probably, two and two and a half or so. All right, we got the second second big fish here on the old the old spinner of bait. All right, Chris, see you later, bud. Well, we found him, boys. Spinner bait, I'll th where's that spinner bait? I'll, th I'll show you the spinner bait I'm catching them on. It's just a white, a white one. Small little, little willow leaf blade action. Nothing too crazy, but for some reason they're feeding. I don't know why they're feeding, it's freezing outside, but sometimes I guess you just gotta find find the ponds where the, the bass are active. But if you, they're not eating spinner baits and you're trying to catch winter bass, Ned rigs, finesse jigs, Sometimes lipless cranks or jerk baits. Those are those are some of my go-to's. So I'm gonna see if I can catch some more fish. Hopefully, some bigger ones. There's one. Oh gosh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I didn't get very good hooking him, so I'm kind of running around trying to keep him pinned. I can't tell how big he is. It's a good size one though. I love this spinnerbait rod. It's like the best spinnerbait and trout bait rod I've ever used. I don't mess too many fish on this thing. That's a fat one. That dude's getting getting close to three. I don't think I've caught probably true, true, true three. But that's pushing it really, really close right there. See you later, Alexander. Woo! Right off that Smoked them, yeah, right off the secondary point. They're munching the spinnerbait today. I didn't think they were going to after I only caught a couple small ones. I thought it was going to be kind of a finesse or a jig bite, but I guess as as it's heating up, sun's sun's not really coming out, but the sun's getting higher and it's getting warmer. It's probably up to about 45 degrees outside right now. For some reason these bass are they're munching it today, boys. There's one. We got doubles. We got doubles. Matt's got one. I got one. Oh yeah. <laughs> there you go. Just a little finesse action here. There you go. Ned rig. Ned rig double up right there. That's what happens. You just That's kind of a, a technique I use a lot just anytime, whether it's winter or summer, spring, fall, anything, is I usually start off with moving baits. See, buddy? I start off with moving baits, and then uh, once I catch, whether I catch some or don't catch some, then I go to more of a finesse, finesse style. And the majority of the time, you can pick off a few more. It's, I mean, sometimes they may not be the biggest, but 
you can at least catch a few more fish before you call it a day. I got one. Yep. You got another double. Oh my gosh. There we go. Another double up. It's the power of the old Ned Rig. Another good old pond double up. We might have stumbled upon some more juice action. We came back to that spot that I was talking about with the juice, the rocks. You guys hear me say that all the time. It's juice. It just means a good fishing spot. We decided to come back. So that's another tip. I'm filling this video with tips. Uh, so one is you take you take moving baits and you go and you know you go around the pond, you catch a few, and then you take some some slower baits, some more finesse baits. Your second tip is if you find a spot that has a lot of fish, like we've probably caught 10 fish in this exact spot today, and you catch a whole bunch, then you don't catch any, leave it, come back in 30 minutes, and a lot of times either those same fish or different fish will kind of load up and go back in that spot. That's just another tip for you guys that are that are pond fishermen, lake fishermen, it doesn't really matter. Is anytime you just catch a whole bunch of fish, leave it for 30 minutes, an hour, maybe even leave it during the day and come back in the evening. And if it's if it's a spot that holds fish, it fish will reload. Different fish will kind of move up on that spot if it's a if it's a good feeding area for the bass well guys that is the end of today's video it's a pretty pretty short time we were only here for two hours we uh we freaking crushed it caught a lot of fish caught some good sized ones hopefully you guys learned something though i try to include lots of tips because i'm back in nebraska and i know a lot of you guys live in the midwest and everything's kind of frozen up and kind of cold not frozen but just cold right now so hopefully you guys learned something if you're uh if you're trying to pond fish where you live but we're gonna go get some lunch um I don't think we're gonna take the kayaks out. I'm not sure, we may take the kayaks out. Uh, it's kind of cold and windy, but I'm gonna end this video here just so uh, keep it short and simple for you. If you guys wanna check out Josh's channel, I will link it down below. He uh, he posts quite a few YouTube videos. He also is the owner of Pick Patrol. So if you guys don't know what Pick Patrol is, I'll leave it down below. It's a pretty cool clothing company. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment down below where you want me to go next. Um, I'm going to Florida in a few days, um, but after that, I am. Uh, I think I'll be down in Texas. So just let me know. Let me know where you guys, where you guys think I should go next. That's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching. In peace. Oh, f yeah, I just broke it. All right. That's useless. So I don't slap a crankbait in the water. All right. What next?